yards to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. So a little more space to operate now. First and ten from right around the 12. Off play action. Madden. They'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let it go deep, right sideline. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So they say no to the penalty. The incompletion stands. It'll be second and ten. And what they want to do is go ahead and take those downs away from them. You never want to give extra snaps to any offense. That's how you get hurt. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. That's going to be caught. It's Chanel. There he goes, left side. 20, 10, if you were me, 5, you touchdown, Jaguars. LaVisca Chanel, 88 yards. And the Jags are on their way to a 2 0. Late stages of the game here in the fourth quarter as this offense takes over first and ten. They'll start by running the option to the right. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. It's the all-pro Von Miller who came in to belt him behind the line. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Oh, he sheds himself free. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They but they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 151 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. They'll run on first down. It's Robinson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Looking like they're well on their way to a 2-0 start. All smiles right now on that sideline. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practice. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. And he takes it in for the score on the game's final play, so it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. As our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little land, yeah, a little extra on top. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Jags, it's a win here, their home opener, as they move to 2-0. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Arizona Cardinals next week. Meanwhile, for Denver, they'll...
I was talking with my crew before the show. By the way, best production team in the biz, or at least that's what they tell me to say. Anyway, I think it's worth discussing on air for this podcast, the new Nike commercial they debuted last night. It, it was not good. It was amazing. You get all these dramatic shots with NFL stars like Lamar Jackson and Russell Wilson. But get this, the final shot, they reserve it for the rookie QB from Jacksonville as he puts on his Jaguars helmet and just stares a hole through the camera. I'm, I'm talking a serious mean mug. And look at this. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Of course, some people just can't enjoy a good thing. They're saying it's too much, too soon, blah, blah, blah. But look, that, that's the get off my lawn crowd anyway. Not, it's not like the kid directed the commercial. He just appears in it. I mean, you tell me. I mean, how many people out there would say no to being in a Nike commercial that gets splashed across primetime TV? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? I mean, we're talking about Nike here. Look, anyway, enough about all that. Why don't we get to the segment we, we actually had planned before I went off on that diatribe. And you know what? It's, it's a good one for a lot of reasons. So Hey, just so you know, I talked to the Nike rep the other day, and they're John really Shorten. pleased with the partnership so far, on and off the field. Honestly, they're blown away. General interest and in sales figures are through the roof. So keep up the good work, bud. Yeah, sounds good to me. Listen, conditions are going to be wet and windy this weekend because of the hurricane coming in. And even if it doesn't hit directly, we're getting those outer bands. Probably not going to put the ball in the air as much. So, you got to make the most of your chances.
on EA Sports, and this being Florida.